If you had, if you want to call, now would be a good time to call 973-900-6453. That's the number to the station to call and say what's up. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? It's your man, DVS Amai, coming to you on another DVS Friday. I hope everybody has had a good week and enjoying this good weather because the fall is here. The kids are back to school. Traffic is to a snarl, and it's going down in every major city with school buses and people. So um, that's for all you people who still work, though. Shade. Boom. Um <laughs> I f there's something I wanted to get out of the way for those of you who've been watching on <laughs> don't I'm sorry real quick Dawn Nicole says she remembers your mic check at Weekway Park you did Mary Had a Little Lamb she oh, slayed yes. it she said she died everywhere that Mary went okay honey. Uh, <laughs> really quickly the hub is having a fundraiser tomorrow right here at 135 prince street newark new jersey if you would like to make donations you can of course do that we'll get you some information by the end of the show or better yet what i'll do is i'll put it up on my page so look for dvs amad d v s i m a a d amad on facebook and i will put up the flyer so that you can find the information and talk to someone who can let you know how to donate if you can't make it. This is to keep the community center running, to keep the programs that they have for children running, to keep the camps running, to keep the My Thoughts Out Loud, where the kids get to come and speak about the things that, you know, or that are bothering them, the issues that they have, to keep all of that going. That's all worth having right here in the city of Newark. So we want you guys, if you can, to go ahead and support this as much as you possibly can. Again, 
I'll show you. I, I showed it at the beginning, but for those of you who are just joining us, I'll flip the camera around a little bit later so that you can get it and you can like screenshot it or something and blow it up or however you make your technology work. But they're going to be having French toast and eggs, chicken salad sandwiches, turkey, bacon and beef sausage, potatoes, pastries and other refreshments that it's going to be catered um, by a chef LJ divinity catering and events. Again, so it's tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., 135 Prince Street, Newark. It's $25. There will be performances. I will be hosting. For tickets, you can call 973-415-7130. Again, 973-415-7130. It, it's uh, tax deductible because it's a 501c3. It's a um, nonprofit organization. So, hey, Leslie, how are you? That's Jasmina in the house. Hey, and my man Kevin Ab Simmons, my hey, Sean is watching. Much love and appreciation, John A. Jackson. Yes, I did talk to China about uh, the open mic, but we'll talk about that in the midst of our conversation tonight because I want to go ahead and get it started because we're kind of running a little behind. But uh, at any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I need to formally introduce this woman sitting to my right. She and I actually went to high school together. And once I saw her, well, what she shares, you know, um, of her life, it's just amazing. It's so I'm um, always happy to see like people from my class doing well and following their dreams. And this is truly that story right here. So please give it up for Miss China Black. If you watch on GS Radio online, I know Facebook is cool and all your friends are here, but invite them to www.gsradionorth.com and check out the show. At any rate, how are you, darling? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. You just got, uh, you just were visiting somebody that most of us know. You took some pictures or were those old pictures? Uh, when, last week? Miss Badu. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was, uh, she came to pack. Mm -hmm. She was in pack. And, um, you know, we went, took the family, I will have you, and then we went over to uh, um, City Field the next day. What City Field? Uh, City Field is a, um, is that like a baseball? I, I want to think it's like a baseball diamond. It's, it's like the Mets or somewhere. It's in Queens. It's mm -hmm. a baseball field mm -hmm. um, in Queens, I believe. They have um, they have a festival there. Oh, okay. That he was a part of like four stages, mm. old school hip hop, nice. um, rock, pop, so all in one mm -hmm. place, and they had like four stages, so you can kind of just like move around nice. or whatever. Awesome. So that was that was really cool, and then we we got a chance to have some um, you know some private time or whatever, just to kind of talk and. You know, just getting her head. Nice. It's always good to have that uh, quality, that private time. Now, how long have you been singing? We'll get back to Erica in a little while, but how long have you been singing? I only know since high school. Mm. Okay, so first of all, this got real loud, real fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disturbed. My ears are... Okay, so where do I fix that? Cause I was afraid, was and like I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to throw off anything. But I, oh, I can't. It's, it's a lot. It's real. Uh, it's real. That's because you came in here had to throw off. It's, soft and it's, it's the only loud. person and who has come to my show so, you know, <laughs> with their own headphones. She comes and plugs in beats. That better. <laughs> Okay. No. <laughs> that's that's yes. Thank Wait, you so what's much. Stacy Mallory, Ty Cook. What's going on? No, How you know. Tony you Baker. What's up, family? Uh, I'm like just really. Okay, so I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't really think it's booge more than me just rather using my own things. You know what I mean? It's just like you have your own yeah, things and China, you course. like your own things. Yeah. But I, but I, I have to, I have to say again because that was off air. But yeah. I am enjoying the smell of this mic. <laughs> China God Black bless is also you. The first person who's coming to my show, he commented on the smell. Listen, oh this mic smells like flowers. It's like cherry blossoms on a hot, <laughs> on a cool afternoon. You know, just like 
Oh, this just smells fresh. Y'all singers know. Y'all singers know. Y'all y'all have shown up somewhere, and they have given you a mic that smells like <laughs> many stinky cows. <laughs> Manure, <laughs> you know, Somebody like old Mentos. Oh my goodness! All right, yeah. seriously though, you've been singing since. Uh, I've been singing really since high school. I'm not on the sense of, I guess, not on that, not on the sense of a platform to a degree, because when I left arts, I went to Texas Southern mm-hmm. on track scholarship as a music major. You know, because I wanted to be a business major. But what they tell you at arts is how you don't get all the class, regular classes will affect you in college. So because the classes you... you Yeah, like you... All I knew, all I... No, what happened was because I was a music major, I think think when I graduated and most people, you included, know that like, I guess when you go to a magnet school, they, fo- for, they focus on the art. Mm-hmm. They don't really focus on English, math, science. No. Sociology. You know, so when I so when I graduated, I might, I might have graduated with like three math, computer class, two Englishes, and history. Mm-hmm. One history, one, <laughs> one French class. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they were like, nah, you got to come better? Yeah, so when I got ready, so when I decided I would be a business major... Epic fail. Wow. So I ended up having to change my major back to music to save my scholarship. Wow. Very well. Because it was the only thing I knew. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Awesome. And how did you from from is what catapulted you into singing professionally after college? Well, I came home and decided that if I was going to school for music, I didn't want to go to school. That was like my junior year. <laughs> what? Yeah, so I came home, right? And I was like, hey, daddy, guess what? I ain't going back. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm not going back because I don't see the point of doing it. I don't want to, if I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I could just go on out here and do this. I don't have to, I don't need no diploma. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You know that you're young, you're thinking. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, if I got to go to school just to do this, then why am I going to be down here? Mm-hmm. When I could just do this. Right. You know, life is, you know, you don't think, you don't think it all the way through. It ain't flushed out. Yeah. Cause you, you know, know, it's a 19, 20 year old mind. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not flushed out. Yeah. You know, so, um, he was like, all right, well, you got to get a job. You can't, <laughs> you can't sit here singing in the house. It's not going to work. <laughs> you know, right. so I, um, I got a job at Continental Airlines. Mm-hmm. I remember that. And, um, you know, I would go with different people to the studio, you know, just kind of feel the vibe and stuff. And um, what ended up happening was I met someone. Um, his name was Floyd. And he was writing from, he was writing for uh, P. Diddy mm-hmm. or Puff Daddy or whoever he was right. going by at that time. Yeah. Right? Um, Puffy, I guess. Um, so... He was he was uh, with Bad Boy as a writer. Okay. And in him, me going with him to the studio, he introduced me to a guy named Ike and another guy named Chuck. Mm-hmm. And they asked me to be a part of their group. Mm-hmm. Um, their group ended up getting signed to Kidar Entertainment. Mm-hmm. At the same time, Erica Wright was signed. Wow. A.K.A. Erica Erica Badu. Badu. Yes. So that was our first meeting. Okay. We were label mates. Nice. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. We were label mates. That uh, that happened, I might have been 21, 22. Yeah. Maybe like- uh, um, I was in college when she started thinking, when I first heard of her. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. So that, uh, I- I quit my job, <laughs> of course, and um, we started working on an album, and then 
you know, like most groups and stuff, we fall out. People want to steal credit, say they do stuff, they don't do it, and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. And, um, you know, the group ended up breaking up. Mm-hmm. But me and me and E had a, uh, we had a like a bond. We for some reason we just connected. You know, every time we saw each other, it was always love, whatever. And um, I remember us going to um, the Soul Train Awards. We had to be, we were roommates in a hotel. And it was like, okay, whoever, if any one of us get famous, we'll pull the other one in. Like, that was just the bond. You know, so, of course, um, our group breaks up. She goes on to do Bodilism, 7 million records. Um... I came home and, you know, I started working again. And then I remember uh, I was working for Nextel because I, now see, here's the thing for, the, here's the thing for people, right? When you work for these companies, work for, work for a company that you can get something out of. I know that's right. Besides the check, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, Continental was Airlines. I make my money. I can take flights. I can go anywhere I want to go. Very nice. Uh, Next tell, free cell phone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So at that time, that's what I I was doing. And I remember sitting outside um, my desk. And I, you know, I was doing well. I was like a lead or whatever, you know. Hey, Steve. And um, I was looking outside my window. And I just remember, I don't want to be in here. I want to be out there. Mm -hmm. I remember it was like... It was really nice outside, and it was not like a cloud in the sky, and I just wanted to be out there. And I went home, got the employee handbook out, and I found the 30-day leave that said that if you just say, I'm crazy, I need help. Uh (laughs) They have to give you 30 days of unpaid leave. (laughs) They had to give you 30 days of unpaid leave. So I went in there like, oh, my God, everything is, everything is possibly wrong. It's wrong. I, I need help. <laughs> I got to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? You know, when they, everything just turned on the scene and they, whoop, okay. It's your leave. Mm-hmm. Gave me 30 days to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And I went, I went and recorded a demo. And I took that demo and I just started giving it to anybody I knew. And the 28th day that I was supposed to go back to work. I got a call from an artist and I was on tour the following week. Get out of here. Her name was Granique Harper. Wow. How long were you Also on signed to Motown, who was signed. See, that's where the connection is. Wow. Ended up back at Kedar Entertainment, which then converted over, he sold his company to Motown mm-hmm. and ended right back connected with her. Nice. So like I, I toured with uh, Granite, and that tour went from Granite to Dave Hollister to the Dave Matthews Band to me recording um, on the Lauryn Hill album. Um, it just just started moving from that point, and then I remember being on the road with Dave in LA, and we were, I was coming into the hotel, and I heard somebody call me by my legal name. Mm-hmm. With a country accent. <laughs> and I turned around, it was Eric. Yep. It, it's like the circle that just keeps coming back mm-hmm. to the same spot. That's cool. He's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm on the road with Dave. All right, well, when you come back, call me. He's like, I remember that promise. Mm-hmm. And that time, I, I went home. I came back. I called her. So we come to the studio. Um... I happened to be in studio with Dave, so we ended up in the same studio. And then Big Mike sees me and is like, you know Eric is down here. So I go down there, and she's like, come come, lay these vocals for me. And I was like, for what? She's like, this song I wrote called Bag Lady. And I recorded Bag Lady that night, and I was on the road that fr- That was on a Wednesday. She gave me 22 songs. I was on the road on Saturday morning, and that turned into eight years. Wow, that is so awesome! Mm-hmm. Oh my 
I, I, like I never knew the story of how it came to be. And I think I, the funny thing amazing. is, I've never. It's been a long time since I've actually pieced the story. Like when you know, because once you some once you cool with somebody, you cool with them, and that's just really what it is. It just kind of grows from there. But and it was interesting because when me and her were together uh, two weeks ago, someone asked how we met, and she remembered. And I just was like, girl, you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, like, so, for me, in hearing the story refreshed from her two weeks ago is how I can kind of tell to you clearly. But then I still had to bring you to that meeting point. And that's been, that's the part I've never actually really said. Wow. I think that's, a mate, like, I've, I've, seen you know the pictures and everything and I, I didn't know that it was that you had been doing it for that long but you just how now you became a mother too somewhere in the last few years since I caught back up with you mm -hmm. and that was your first son right first and last <laughs> <laughs> and how is motherhood and, and you got married too mm -hmm. and how is all that trying to manage all that with a career that takes you out on the road well, let, let's just, let's make the correction before, for the sake of correcting. Okay. I got married, then I had a baby. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to <laughs> no, say no, no, that no, out no, of no, order. No, 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 it's not oh, out yeah. of order. You know, I'm just saying, I was just saying, I got married, I had a baby. That's how that worked out. But, <laughs> shape. Now, <laughs> 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 no, no, I don't, um. <laughs> Chicken cheese. Okay. <laughs> now, um, what, what did you ask me? Uh, juggling motherhood. Being oh a yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it's it, at first it was um, it was well, it was real natural mm. when I think about it. But I didn't um, it was what I wanted. I was ready for it. Uh, I was settled. That makes a difference. I had I did everything I needed to do. You know, I wasn't selfish. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I wasn't selfish with my time. I, I was ready to be in a position to give to a child. Nice. You know, and, and that was something that, I, that was important to me anyway, to be in a place where I'm, I'm, I don't got that itch, mm -hmm. you know, that itch to like be on the road or be gone or you know, just things like that or whatever, because I, um, I, when I did do it, I wanted to be focused. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be that and nothing else, at least for some time. And I, like, my son came, I stopped, I didn't work for, for maybe almost two years. Okay. Just to be planted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my uh, husband doubled down at work so I could stay home and, Nice. Figure out that way, and it was, so, and he's flourished so much because of it. Mm. I believe. Mm -hmm. you know, How old is he now? He's four. Wow. He walked at eight months, and was talking at eighteen months. Get out of here. Mm hmm And that's and from, he, from the constant, you know, having somebody there with. Yeah. Him. We never. We just had certain things. We never did the baby talk. Right. That was the one rule. We was like no baby talk. We would always talk to him as an adult, mm -hmm. so that he. You know, Learned then he English. skips that phase because everything yes. is about a process of imitation. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you gag, 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 gag all day long, That's he's gonna, he's gonna begin to gag, 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 and then you're gonna have to develop that into words. Mm -hmm. When let's just get on to the words. Exactly. You know, so I mean, a lot of that was just having you know real conversations, um, exercising the legs and the arms and. You know, just kind of really being there for the moment. Like I, I've, I'm, I'm blessed to have been in a position where I could see it from. I could see the tr transition. I could see the first look, to the first smile, to being on his back, to his first rollover, to him pushing himself up and rocking back and forth, to his crawl, to his walk, to the first time he said boogie. Wow. That's his nickname. He just was like, like boogie. We was like, ah! <laughs> oh my god. He said boogie! Wow. 
everything was just so <laughs> you know that just so being awesome. able to see it mm-hmm. and um life life sets us up sometimes that we're not able to see that yeah. Uh, yeah. you know so again being grateful i know that's right you yeah. know i've been grateful to be able to see his sees his transformation right before my eyes to him now being four over half my height <laughs> with a red stripe um in karate really? yeah got his first red stripe this week nice so he's like i got three more to go to get to the yellow belt that's what <laughs> you know. so now he's going around one two three kick punch people in the you know in the, in the areas <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Grandma! And now you also uh, started doing. Well, you you and you was the group that I saw you with down at the Key Club. It was you and two other young ladies, and you all were singing a Patty. Helen Bruna, Terry Jones. Yes. What? Yeah. Hold up, one sec. First of all, uh, real quick, the number to call in if you want to join the conversation and say what's up. Hey, Luana and Tanya and Mike and uh, who else did we miss? Uh, well, I don't know, but thank you everybody for showing up. Uh, 973-900-6453 is the number to call in and uh, give any shout outs and say what's up. Hey, Miss Pink Key. How you doing, baby? Good to see you in the chat room. Um, also, this song, what's the, what, what? What's the what's the name of the song? It, y'all know the Patti Bell song that she did. Oh. Um, what can you thank you? Boom. Thank you. <laughs> what can you do for me? She did this with these two sisters, and she's gonna say the name again. Um, their names again. Helen Bruna, Terry Jones. Me away. Cause I hadn't seen you sit. First of all, when back in school, when cause a lot of people don't know this. But my last year in high school, I switched from being a drama major to a music major and joined the chamber choir that China was in with <laughs> Miss, Sheba Mr. Howard, Mr. Mr. Howard's Mr. finest, <laughs> and Haas McMillan. It's quite a few people came you know, out of that. It was, it was uh, an amazing experience. Me, you, Bath, uh, Bath Sheba Sumter, mm-hmm. um, Patricia, oh, yeah. Haas. Kwan, mm-hmm. we we had tr- we had yeah our choir was it was we the nationals we uh-huh. won the uh, first place in nationals when the national competition um, it was amazing Rochelle mm-hmm. no we had we had them things like you <laughs> did. you did not want it from but that class of ninety one the soprano section this one and that she. I remember when uh, one of the judges uh, said, ask you guys, you, you and Bathsheba, to come down so mm-hmm. they could hear the rest of the surprise. Because uh, 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 that's, they, I mean, it was, it was amazing. It was, it was just it a was wall of though. sound. Yeah. Power. But um, how did you get with those two young ladies? And what was that group? How was that? What was that experience about? Uh, well, Helen, Helen Bruna and Terry Jones are a group. Okay. They're, um, they're sisters. And they they do they do soul music. Mm-hmm. They're from Philadelphia. Okay. Um, they also uh, are members of the recording chapter the, um, for the Grammys um, oh. that I'm a part of. I'm a Philadelphia chapter member. Nice. And you know, like we met because of another sister in uh, Philadelphia named Cal Reddick. Um, the the two of them were on tour together. Mm-hmm. It was called the Indie Sister Soul Tour. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it was called. And they were doing New York in New York. And Carol referred me to open for them in Newark in New York. And through the conversations or through that moment, we just like really connect connected in like a really cool way. And that was some time ago. We been friends let's say seven years now seven eight years and that's how you guys yeah and that, that's how that we came, yeah we came oh the reason we came together to do that song because i was like i want to do it <laughs> like anything they're like you know they're like my big sisters so i'm like the brat mm. of everything <laughs> okay so i'm like 
Helen, you know, I feel like we should do this song because I think it is so dope and we would just slay the kids. I just want to slay everybody and with my high parts and I want to just sing high on a song and then y'all can sing low and I can be high, you know. <laughs> and they like, all right, shorty. You know. <laughs> I was like, yes, I think we need to do this song. And and I want to do it with y'all. We just need to do it. Nice. Right? So we having a phone conversation mm-hmm. and they're like and i guess they decided <laughs> i guess they came back and was like oh that might be a good idea so let's do it it was it's, it's you know, an amazing rendition yeah it really is it's and killer. how did you come to do fairy tale which is one of my favorite songs fable love what's up fable why do i keep calling it fairy Child, tale they be calling it fable sable stables uh, failed it's love. Fable, right? uh-huh. fable. Okay, with Louis. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's all right, child. I can sing all the words of the song. I don't remember names. Just no, no, like, no, no, no. It's yeah. all good. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Listen, I don't. Uh, uh, I was. It wasn't no shade for me. No, 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 no. I'm saying I don't. I really don't. <laughs> I like child. You talking about fable? He was like, how you do fairy tales? I don't know. I, I don't. N- Never. I, don't know, I don't know how I did fairy tales. <laughs> I've been trying to convince a friend of mine. Like, <laughs> the name of that song was fairy months. tales. Not just that, but that my my brain is so fried. I just don't remember. The people think I'm I'm trying to be funny. I'm really not. I just don't remember stuff. Aww, but uh, I know that song. I can sing that song just about word for word. But don't ask me the name of it. I, yeah, I, I fucked that up. No. But. Well, fable. Um, Little Lewis. That was the original composer of the record he i was introduced to him by dawn tallman (laughs) donisha um yeah he was working on the album and he was looking for you know some sopranos and stuff and she gave him my name and we came and cut that record and then like a year later little louie no louis uh little uh Louis Vega, mm-hmm. not Little Louis. Little Louis, Louis Vega, mm-hmm. two different people. Mm-hmm. So um, Vega was playing it at a club, and I happened to be at the club, and they introduced me to him, and he was like, oh, my God, I think this song is so good, you know. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know, whatever. <laughs> so another year goes by, and I start getting these text messages. Josh Milan, all the, you know, um, Kenny Bowlby and all all of our, our house greats um, was hitting me up like, oh my God, your single is so hot. And I was like, what? What single, child? I don't know that about no single. I'm sitting at the house. What is y'all talking about? So we go, that was the year, um, was that the year I got married? We got married? I said I got married. We got married? That was the year? So we go to Miami on, um, we go to Miami for a winter music conference. And it's me, my husband, Cece, his wife, and um was it Dawn? Tommen or Wade? It might have been huh Tommen. It might have been Dawn. But they just started playing the record. And people was going crazy and they was like, oh my god, that's just a and Frankie Knuckles, Knuckles was spinning it. So then I'm like, well, Did he do a remix on it? So what happened was, <laughs> this is, I was like, this is the record y'all talking about I just put out? Chad, this record's like five years old. What are y'all talking about? So what happened was the original came out, and then I guess he and Lil Louis, Lil Louis, um, I guess, I don't know, I guess they struck some kind of deal and he ended up remixing the record. Mm -hmm. And then that record did more than the original. original. Very nice. So people know me more for the remix Mm -hmm. than for the the original original. record. Like the remix, is my my name is on it. (laughs) (laughs) The The, the remix ain't featuring China Black. Mm -hmm. The original... Yeah, yeah, that's, that's you know, kind of how it, it goes. Say what it say. I think that's the that's the version I found, the Frankie Knuckles version. Mm. Um, so which for which is there one that you prefer to do more, like the the neo soul or the house music or? I don't know. 
there about evenly yoked fans? I mean, because of course, you know. Okay, now it it depends from. It depends, basically. Um, it's kind of more so like you know you think about it from a business standpoint, right? Mm. Business standpoint, the preference for me to do my own original music, um, of course, requires a lot more maintenance and overhead and things like that. So of course, the check is a little smaller. Right. When you <laughs> when you do when you doing singles like this, it's just a simple track and a person. So if if it was a, I would say if it was about the money, then it will probably I would probably lean, lean more towards house. But because it would be about how I feel about being expressive and having my own platform. I don't, you know, I don't mind having the overhead to walk away with less mm. to have my because platform. Yours. Yeah. Okay. You know, so it's like wake up one morning, you're like, I just want to make this money, mm-hmm. and then some days you're just like, I just feel like saying some shit. Mm-hmm. You know, so it varies. That's good to have those. I look at my, though. I look at my bank account and I decide. I know. Shit. <laughs> Um, there's a problem here. I gotta go get this bag. <laughs> I gotta go get this bag. I'm gonna go do a thing of house records. I know. Up this, <laughs> I'm gonna go take some house dates and up this, up this, uh, get this bag get this together. Oh, do, do they book you a lot around here in like in the tri state area? Or do, not for, in Jersey? To, um, you as a solo artist as opposed to singing, uh, background. Well, I don't sing background no more. No. Mm-mm. When was the? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. When was the um, last time you? My last tour. My last tour is, uh, was with Raheem Devon. That was the okay. last tour I did. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh nine. Oh. Oh wow. Okay. Two thousand ten. Okay. Was yeah. Mm-hmm. Conscious decision, or you just grew out of it, grew past it. Conscious. And yeah, and then kind of wanting to be. Um, I just started. No, I at that point I had been on the road since '97, mm-hmm. right? Um, I just kept coming home to things that I missed. Mm-hmm. You know, like people getting old, people passing away, people, kids, babies are now in, are now graduating from high school, and mm-hmm. I done missed all their life. You know, you you know, you 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 miss so much when you're not around. You know yeah. what I mean? So I just kinda wanted to get planted because I knew that I wanted to have a family at some point. I knew and I needed to prepare a transition out. Okay. You know, and um I just I've just been grateful enough to you know, it took some time to figure it out. But I'm grateful to be in a position where I'm in a success, successful transition nice. of my life. That's what's up. Where I'm still able to do music, still do what I want to do, still sing on stages when I feel like it, still do, you know, but still be able to be home, be a mother, be a wife, be a daughter, mm-hmm. and be present. Right. And that's something I haven't been wow. in years. I think that's so awesome that you're saying that because there are a lot of people who kind of rush into uh, different areas of their lives and now they're going back trying to catch up. Mm. Um, like In I, a second childhood. Right, exactly. Yeah. And to have it, work, to put it in order the way that you put it in order is a whole lot, is it maybe, uh, maybe a, what I'm seeing is it's a whole lot simpler, it's a lot more peaceful. It's strategic. Mm-hmm. You know, it's about strategy. Every road is going to come to an end. And at some point, you have to figure out, well, when this road ends, am I, what side of the coin am I being, you know, what's mm-hmm. the, am I going to be cup half full, cup half empty? Right. You know, and, and most people see the signs. They see when, you know, time is coming, it's time to start trying to get your uh, acorns and start harvesting. You know, putting them somewhere for, but they just don't pay attention. Like they don't. it's just, they just think it's gonna last forever. They just gonna make it last. <laughs> well, a few of my friends 
Make it last forever. Uh, okay. You well, can't make said, nothing uh, last. Sweat. Yes. <laughs> Child, like, honey, you can't make nothing last forever. The really Lord can. says there are seasons. Right. For everything. Exactly. So, you know, when um, some people uh, some people try to hold on until they can't hold on no more. And some people say, okay, let me just start doing this. Let me, okay. Not a, it's not a running joke, but it's it kind of is between uh, some of my friends and myself um, about turning 40. And for me, when I turned 40, it was like a, a switch happened. Mm-hmm. Like everything became clearer. The, uh, things in life became more defined. Mm-hmm. I was more focused. Mm-hmm. But at the age of 40, mm-hmm. did, did, did something like that happen for you? I think I think it the pieces came together. They started to kind of align themselves then. Oh, nice. But I always knew that the, I always saw the signs, you know, like whether it was in the, in the relationship or in the conversations or in the way it felt. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't feel the same no more. It just didn't, you know. It I just I I'm, I'm always been one to watch the signs. I watch, even now, I watch the trees. I watch the movement of the wind. I, you know, I, I'm just always looking for God's way of saying, all right, it's time to bust a move, you know? So, um, yeah, I think once that transition happened, things started to kind of line itself up because I'd already started beginning the process of the exit. Mm-hmm. You know, I hadn't exited yet, but I knew that exit was coming, and I needed to start figuring things out okay. or what have you. So, what are you doing now? What pro- are there specific projects you're working on right about now? Um, right now, I am a log- travel and logistics coordinator for a wedding band agency in New York. Wow. Um, I have a band and a choir signed to that agency so I'm so both sides kind of managing. I came in as a I came in as just you know talent but now I work corporate and talent nice. um, I, uh, I have an amazing <laughs> <time. laughs> go get the bag you got that bag come on audience <laughs> <laughs> yes I love that. I need. I'm, I'm gonna have to record them claps and get that for claps. yourself. Yes, isn't that cool? So I just walk around with my own my own audience. Mm-hmm. I can see myself Anytime at work I'm right now. Say something. I had to set that thing up. They be walking. And funny. I just I'm clap to walk around, and all of a sudden, you just hear. <laughs> uh, I thought she was ready As for me. I thought it was gonna music. come in. Mm-hmm. I, was like, I thought she was gonna hear. <laughs> Test take two. <laughs> You're supposed to be set up over there, girl. You messing up a joke. <laughs> we ready now? I, was, I didn't even say. I didn't even do the part. There you go. Chow, chow. <laughs> <laughs> they mess. They mess up your jokes on this show. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Uh, I'm appalled. They mess up your jokes. Yeah, but the mic smell good, so oh, it you know, since mm-hmm. one half does mm-hmm. the other, you can't have yes. everything. The mic smells good. Citrus bliss. So you can't, you know, you can't. Do What's this for breeze? Is that? <laughs> I'm gonna find out what the smell this is. What smell is this? <laughs> that for breeze, uh, Hawaiian breeze. Oh yeah, there is one. Because uh, <laughs> Hawaiian breeze was my thing, girl. <laughs> I'm about to call you, girl. Ciao. Hawaiian breeze was my. That was your situation. Yes, I had to spray. I had the gel, the little gels you put, you plug up to make the whole house smell like candle, that. The wax. Yes, things. I had the little can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's serious. Yes. It's a, what, is, what is it called? Aromatherapy. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Yeah, all them chemicals. I didn't think it was doing me any therapy. I just like, <laughs> <laughs> I just like the way it smells. <laughs> Uh, what are some of the places do you you traveled outside the country to? Yes. 
what was one of the, what what are some of the places that you've gone where you have been well received overseas? <laughs> Amsterdam Every, always goes Amsterdam? hard. Really? Yes, because everybody's high. They don't care <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> you ready for the joke now? Am I cute? In Amsterdam, all they do is. And clap. Yes. <laughs> That's all they do is clap for you. They like, yeah, child. We devolved into fun. this. Hey, what's up, uh, Ebony <laughs> and my little sister Joy, Linda, Renee. What's going on, people? James. Um, hey, my niece, Tiffany. How are you, dear heart? All of you, thank you once again for watching. This is uh, China Black. We sitting here kicking it. Again, the number to call in if you would like to, 973-900-6453. Um, so you're basically managing now. How is, do you, are, now do, you said you sing in a band with them? Mm -hmm. At some? Yes, yeah, cause. So you playing boats, you on the Tyler Perry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gotta I'm going to direct you and I'm going to act and I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> how, how often are you booked uh, as the band book? Well, Frequency does a lot of uh, political events. Um, like you, we would we're doing uh, we're doing um, the Democratic uh, Road to Victory Party and uh, their fundraiser. They were doing their toy fun, toy drive fundraiser. Um, we get a lot of union contracts for holiday parties and things like that, you know. And then uh, Fortress, my other band. They uh, they do a lot of uh, weddings, uh, like a lot of um, huge, big um, events. We did like George Lucas's reception, and you know, like really like big uh, high profile mm -hmm. weddings. So it's like the combination of that, and then I'm, I do all of that. I you know I I work at the agency. I I record. I go to Brooklyn. I record vocals for the agency. I, for at least for my band and horn sections and stuff like that and um, rehearse them. Uh, we do showcases once a month. I showcase for the agency. And, you know, Sunday morning I, I get in the pulpit and I I show up for work at the church. What? <laughs> oh, no, I said I, um, <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> no, nah, I mean, like, I do, I have the, I do, I work for the agency. I have, you know the bands and the choir and then i also work at my church so yeah nah okay uh, no no i'm not the music director there are you gonna tell us or keep us a oh he, um <laughs> well no the musical director um his name is alex mack um well my church is christian pentecostal uh church it's um the big blue church oh i can't miss it quaint and clean um no i'm trying to remember a lady that works there she works downstairs in a daycare i can't oh, remember okay. her name but which one I she's the one. she's the one who cooks inga inga pierce yes. yeah inga pierce the infamous yeah but uh she um alex mack is our musical director but my best friend in the whole wide world Tyrone Ellis is the praise and worship leader. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I do that on Sunday. Yeah, That's something I do every Sunday. pretty much every day of the week. So, nice. You know. Such a varied. <laughs> I have like eight jobs. For real, like you come from the the professional corporate um, corporate perspective of booking and uh, working with the bands, rehearsing them, also singing with them, doing the backgrounds going with the choir to make sure they have and being in the choir and in the death hall. Yeah, we do the um, uh, Urban Gospel is the name of the choir and we do uh, the Alvin Ellie Gala. That we've, this is going to be our seventh year doing the Alvin Ellie Gala in um, in Manhattan. It's usually their season their season open opening. Um, it's like a really big, huge event that they do for the uh, for the dancers, the Alvin Ellie troupe. And um, when they they have their first season, their season opener, and then they have a gala that night. And hmm, 
The name of it is Urban What? The Choir is Urban Gospel. And we were talking about um, how I've conducted the choir for that Alvin Ailey Gala for the past couple of years. I loved Alan Ed when they used to come every year at mm-hmm. High. Mm-hmm. I would that was the one one of the days I got to skip all my classes to stay downstairs and help them roll them big linoleum floors across our stage. Mm-hmm. And we had to basically be stage hands for them the entire day to make sure that the dancers had everything they need. And we got a free show every year. It was so mm-hmm. it was so amazing. They still do rock in my soul. Really? No, so I'm asking. Uh, well, no, we. I haven't been to. Uh, I haven't been to a performance. It's this. It's just. It's, this is just like. I guess it's like a fundraiser oh, okay. for their scholarships mm-hmm. uh, for um, for the youth. Oh. Okay. You know, and then they come in and they they introduce the who's going to be a part of uh, the season for that year, and you know they pay homage to them and they dance and eat and have a good time and stuff like that. A showcase once a month. Twice a m- well, we showcase um, the agency Elon Artists. Uh, we showcase normally between once and two times a month. It's a plethora of bands. You know, pretty much what happens is uh, we have clients that are interested in bands for their weddings, so they are able to come to our office and um, showcase and watch live bands to see which one they want to select. I, I'm trying to think of how that works. You just it's have a bunch like of a, bands. It's like it's usually like between two to three bands, uh-huh. and they have like a showcase segment of maybe 20 minutes a piece where they put in a whole like me- melody medley, medley. Mm-hmm. of uh, material that they okay. can condense into like a 20 minute set, nice. and um, they pretty much do s- snippets. And that you mm-hmm. work, you do that out of New York. Yes. Okay. And you were saying that the show about the about the showcase once or twice a month. Is there a specific venue that people can go to to see? They come to our office. Our office, the front of our office is like a headquarters where you have desk and everything and all that. But then the back of our office is a showcase room. Oh, uh, okay. With okay. a stage, mic, sound. We complete. We can record records. Nice. Like we have recording capability. How in the back. To, how did you come to work with that agency? Ah, that's a great story. My other bestie, um, Jure Nance, when I first came home and was trying to figure out, you know, what I'm going to do, mm-hmm. he is like, come on and get this coin over here at this church and be a section leader. <laughs> and I was like, okay, poo. So I came, went over there, um, and it was Marble Collegiate uh, Gospel Choir. Um, it's non-denomination church on, I want to say that's 29th in Madison. Okay. It's, no, Park. 29th in Park. And um, huge, huge church. And I was there as a, just a section leader, you know, in the choir, just, um, just teaching parts and assisting him as he was, you know, he was the director or what have you. And the owner of the agency happened to be in church like he came with someone else to the church on the day we were singing and like the choir so from the choir he had you know he him and Jure you know they met and he was directing the choir and I was just in the choir and I uh, try to lie get my little money and then um, the uh, owner decides, I want to build a band. I want to use you, that girl with the big hair, this other girl, and you pick somebody else. And it was me, Jare, another young lady, and um, he, his brother. Um, and we cre- created a band called Jare that was signed to the company. And then in the transition of Jure transitioning into other lanes, you know, in his um, on his path as far as Broadway and all those other things or whatever, he just he needed to go back to Dallas. So when he went back to Dallas, I ended up with the band. 
and the quiet. And then so I revamped the bed. I revamped the choir. And um, and then at the top of the year, um, they they brought me into the office. Of 2017. Mm-hmm. So I've been I've been working with the agency. <laughs> Everything seems like eight years. Everything has its own eight year spin. Like seven, eight years. That must be my number. Um, yeah, like I, I have I've been working for the agency just as a singer for many years. And this year I came into the office. So now I work in the office and then I have the um, the band and the choir. It seems like there's a whole lot of synchronicity in your life. It just everything kind of meshes Line. really well, like how mm-hmm. it's, I think that's so awesome. Everything just kind of boop boop boop. That says a lot about your spirit. Like everything lines up for you. I think that's pretty cool. Um, lastly, I because I hear the thank you music. That's usually our <laughs> our sign to wrap it up. Uh oh, child, sorry. <laughs> that's her, sorry, girl. The ever so subtle way. <laughs> I get your ass out. And I love it because you know the thank you to our guests. Hey, but so what's what's her. next for uh, China Black? What's the next thing that you want to get in get to do? Well, a China Black album is coming. Finally, yeah. That's the first time I said that out loud. I'm so glad you is. said it here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've always played with it and said, "Okay, new music coming, new music coming." But yeah, I can kind of be comfortable enough to say, "Yeah, an al- a China Black album is coming." So, yeah. no, that's right. Get all of it. I, I, listen, I've known, to, I've learned too much for it to be any other way. Absolutely, it has, to, it, it has to be. Um, at you know, at this point, what what haven't I done but that? Yeah. It's like a natural evolution where now that has to be done in order to at least complete to complete the story. Yeah, an album has, an album has to come. You know, and at this point, I done sang with everybody. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I done been to school for arrangement and orchestration, and so why not? Right. You know, I um, if I want to get out the things that are in my head, why I, why not it be me that spearheads that? What advice you know? would you give to uh, any up and coming artists in this area who would? like to follow in your footsteps uh get to do singing with you know background singing and you know, get to do their own singles and possibly one day their own album time place opportunity preparation mm. i mean and i guess the reason why i say that is everything that's transpired in my life I have not had an, i have not done an audition I have not <laughs> rehearsed for anything. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, you know, it's God all day. You know, but I've I've never been in those positions. I've never had to audition for a thing in my life. I was just ready when it came. Mm-hmm. You know, so study your craft. Be about the study of your craft first, because you don't know what's gonna happen from one day to the next. And you don't know when it's going to show up. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for it. <laughs> that was good. Though. Would you? That uh, was a good accent. Though. Didn't know it was going to show up. Have you thought about teaching kids? Or do you teach kids already? No. I haven't. Right now I'm just trying to teach the one I got. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I, I I said that my when I retire, I would love to get me a nice little music supervisor uh, job at Nickelodeon. Mm. That's where I want to land. It will happen. I firmly believe it will happen. Yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll um, align. Mm-hmm. It'll, I'll meet somebody like that you. knows somebody that meets somebody that knows somebody. You probably already <laughs> know them and just don't know yet. Mm-hmm. That's how it turns out. Most cases, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I thank you so much for coming. Thank it's you for having me. It's been a stone cold group. I, I, I really enjoyed Aww. having you. It's been having you here. Um, and I want to thank everybody who tuned in. And I thank your husband for coming down with you. I appreciate it. Um, I don't know if you're my favorite. What's up, everybody? Um, that's 
looking at us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And you can always check out the entire interview on www.gsradionorth.com. One more time for Miss China Black. Show her some love. Much love to Tracy Evans and all of the Artai crew, Simone tuned in, Ken Wilson, Tony Bowens, Princess Allen, Monica Carney, Smith, yeah, Carney Smith, Ralph Rajan Morris, Richard Rajan Morris, I'm sorry, Rich, uh, Tony Baker, and a host of other people who are tuned in tonight. We thank y'all for watching. We really, really appreciate it. What I need everybody to do, um, really quickly. We share fights. We share, you know, people getting shot, people getting killed by the cops. We share all of that stuff all day. Let's share some things that are positive to people that we actually know. So hit the share button. Share it on your page. If you can't think of anything to write on the tag, check out my girl China Black. Love her to death, whatever. Hashtag China Black, whatever it is. But put something up there, let your friends know that it's something that you watch, something that you would like them to watch, and you're, you're reposting it because you think that they would enjoy it. Let's help each other in that fashion. Let's do that, okay? We make people with Cardi B and all the rest of these Kardashians and all of them, we make them famous, and what do they care about you? You can't speak to them. They don't even know you exist. So please share this. Um, thank you. Please share Thank you so much. Yes, another uh, Jaguar in the house. Uh, much love and appreciation. So again, share the videos. We thank you. Uh, like, comment, and share. Tell, you know, say how you enjoyed the interview. Say how you enjoy the show uh, so that we can get better. If there's anything that you would like us to work on or something that you would like to see, you can definitely get at me in my inbox. And I am going to post this on my page if you haven't already done so you can even buy a ticket uh, electronically uh, online so I will put the information out tonight when I uh, right after the show okay so once again I thank y'all for watching and I thank everybody out there on Ustream I thank my entire GS Radio Nork family everybody in the 180 plus countries who are watching right now we appreciate you come on 181 plus countries I like the sound of that and we yes. do this every Friday for you. So remember, when really times does. get hard, the harder you fall, the higher you bounce. So remember that when you tripping. My name is Devia Samad. <laughs> Thanks again to my guest, China Black. And thank you for these this words of wisdom, Devious child. Friday. These words, it's just, yes. Peace. Thank you. We out of here. Give Ooh. me my claps. Did you get addicted to the applause? <laughs> And stop. Oh, okay. Maybe not. And stop. There you go. Uh, www.gsvideonorth.com. All the old, old, older episodes, rather, of uh, the Thank you. 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 Thank But you can. She was getting ready to say, "Don't forget these nuts." I know that's right.